Yes! Destiny 2 is a special FPS game in the sense that it not only breaks away from the monotonous expectation of competitive multiplayer and or PvP existing as the sole source of replayability and longevity for a game. Well, Destiny 2 does have a PvP side, but there's also a PvE side as well. There also exists a third mode which combines elements of PvP and PvE known as Gambit. And in this video, we're going to discuss the how to's of Gambit, what Gambit is, and yeah, you're probably aware that this is going to be a guide at this point in time, so without further ado, let's get it in. If Gambit has piqued your interest, you'll first want to familiarize yourself with this game mode's vendor, The Drifter. The Drifter is a wisecracking, sarcastic, mysterious individual referred to as a rogue light bearer due to the city's uncertainty of his loyalty. The Drifter can use the light just like your guardian can, but nobody knows his capabilities. Now, if you read the lore and talk to some of your lore savvy friends, they'll tell you that The Drifter is a literal enigma and he isn't trusted by many. The Drifter commentates all Gambit matches, similarly to how Lord Shaxx commentates Crucible matches, and you'll find them in an obscure room in the tower's annex. Just like every other vendor, the Drifter has bounties, which will grant what's known as infamy points when completed. These infamy points contribute to your overall rank of the Gambit playlist, and once you've hit 15,000 infamy points, you're allowed to reset your infamy rank to receive various rewards no differently than hitting 2,000 points in Crucible Valor. Makes sense? I hope so. Anyways, the Drifter's bounties are also useful if you're trying to collect the Gambit weapons and armor. And make sure that you pay attention to the bounties that have legendary gears of reward because these are bounties that will guarantee you the acquisition of some Gambit armor or a Gambit weapon. Now when it comes to the game mode itself, you're going to get very familiar with the words Motes, Bank, and Primeval. Motes are white, pyramidic objects that spawn from defeating enemies in Gambit. The objective is to collect these items and deposit them into the moat bank, which is located in the center of each Gambit map. When you die, you lose all of your moats, and none of them will manifest off for you upon your death, which means that you will have to collect more. This is one of the most frustrating things that could ever happen in Gambit, so I highly suggest that you bank moats in increments. You can carry up to 15 moats at a time, but the unspoken rule in Gambit has always been to go for 5 moats at a time and never go out of your way to get anything higher than 10. You'll be tasked to fight against all of Destiny 2's enemy races in Gambit, but only one race at a time per match, so there'll never be a point in time where you're fighting Vex one round and then Cabal the second round. These are the enemies that are spawned most when defeated. Gambit maps are split up into 3 different sections, and enemies will spawn at one section at a time in groups, and another wave of enemies won't spawn elsewhere until the current wave is completely destroyed. Gambit rewards teams that are fast at doing this, and this sense of urgency will punish the enemy team. And there's also another thing you'll want to know. Gambit has some of the most intelligent, aggressive, and annoying enemy AI in Destiny 2, roughly comparable to that of the high difficulty PvE activities. Being intelligent, the enemies in Gambit can tell when you're carrying a lot of moats and or when you're on the verge of death, and to make things worse, they seem to do a lot more damage than usual. You'll find out how annoying it can be when you find yourself carrying 15 moats and all of the aggro of every enemy on the map is drawn to you. Believe me, it happens all the time and it's incredibly annoying. And as of presently, Gambit only has six maps consisting of New Arcadia, Deep Six, Kells Grave, Emerald Coast, and Cathedral Scars. At the top of the screen, there are two meters, one for your team and one for the other team. And this meter will progress provided that you're banking moats. The colored part of the meter represents the moats that have been successfully banked, while the gray part represents the moats that are still being held on to. When a total of 75 moats are banked, your team will summon a taken boss known as a Primeval, and the first team to kill the Primeval wins the round. When the Primeval is summoned, it'll be accompanied by two taken wizards with void shields known as Primeval Envoys, and they have to be destroyed as quickly as possible. Because doing so will enable you to start building stacks of what's known as Primeval Slayer, which appears as a notification on the left side of your screen. Primeval Slayer stacks up to 10, and the higher the number equals the more damage your team can inflict on the Primeval. Oh, and if the opposing team hasn't summoned their primeval yet, they can still send blockers over, making it incredibly inconvenient for you to focus solely on the boss. If you're ahead of the opposing team, the smart thing to do is to kill the primeval envoys and as many of the blockers as you can to tone down the turmoil a bit and make it easier to kill the primeval. Taken goblins would be the worst ones to deal with because they can make the other taken enemies invincible, including the primeval itself. So if I were you, I would get them out of the way as quickly as humanly possible. Now here's when things get interesting. Anytime any amount of moats higher than five is banked, a taken enemy known as a blocker is sent over to the opposing team's side and until it's destroyed that respective team won't be able to bank any moats. If the presence of the blocker itself wasn't big enough indicator that you can't bank, your team's moat bank will also recede into the ground. There are three different types of blockers in Gambit. Banking 5 to 9 moats will send over a taken goblin, a small blocker, banking 10 to 14 will send over a taken captain, also known as a medium blocker, 
and Bacon 15 modes will send over a Taken Knight, which is also known as a large blocker. These enemies are a huge inconvenience, and if you don't destroy them quickly, you will have some huge problems on your hands, because before you know it, you will be up to your neck in a sea of blockers. If you have selected hearing like I do, it's a good thing to know that you'll always hear a very discernible alarm sound whenever a blocker is sent over to your side. Now this is where the PvP aspect again becomes into play. When your team banks 25 moats, your team is granted access to what's known as an invasion portal. Only one guardian can use the portal at a time, and once you invade the opposing team's side, you have 30 seconds to wreak as much havoc as possible. As an invader, you're given an overshield, the ability to see the four opposing guardians through the environment, and the number of moats they're carrying, which is displayed over their heads. You'll be returned to your side if you're killed, if you achieve four guardian kills, or if you run out of time, so be as big of an inconvenience as you possibly can. Realize that you'll only be given two opportunities to invade per round, until your team summons a primeval. Once when 25 moats are banked, and an additional time for 50. If you evade the other side while the enemy's primeval is present, and kill opposing guardians, you'll return health to the enemy primeval. This will prolong the fight for the opponents, and will be exactly what you want to do in order to increase the likelihood of your team winning the round. If you manage to arrange a team before, I highly suggest allowing your team's best PvP player or most experienced invader assume the responsibility of invading, at least until you yourself becomes comfortable enough to do it. Okay, let's recap. We talked about the importance of banking moats, killing blockers, invading, and destroying the primeval. I think you got a pretty good understanding of the gambit now. So that does it for this one, everybody. If you made it to the end of this video and found it useful, do me a favor and thumb rest of that like button until it turns blue. And if you're new to my neck of the woods, go ahead and subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you don't ever miss a video of the most elite gaming content. But with that being stated, 1LHD is over and out. Y'all take it easy.